Follow us on a journey as we embark on this adventure, discovering just how businesses in Essex have adjusted to these current testing times. With Brexit being on the cards for some time and the implications of a pandemic spreading worldwide, we welcome you to Business, Brexit and Beyond. Businesses continue to find ways of trading. In this episode, we hear from very different companies, how they have adapted their business to continue to trade under the new regulations. We monitor air pollution um, throughout the UK and we also manufacture air pollution monitoring equipment and parts that we ship around the world. So on a daily basis, we're making um, components for air quality equipment. Uh, so young Lauren here is um, putting together a, uh, a part of one of our analyzers to allow us to um, identify key pollutants in the air uh, to control um, uh, exposure uh, to people to, for people to air quality. So after all the components are built, um, they're placed on test for an extended period um, on this rack. We can measure all performance characteristics of the analyzers and ensure that when they go to the client, they're um, perfectly um, able to measure all the important air quality data that's required. Um, once that's completed, it takes typically about a week. Once that's completed, the analyzers are boxed up and shipped out to all parts of the world. Excalibur screw bolts uh, revolutionised the construction fixings industry when our managing director Charles Bickford came up with the idea of a twin helix bolt that would screw directly into concrete. Um, that was circa 25 years ago, the original idea, um, but we've gone on to develop that and bring it into the marketplace into large infrastructure projects such as Crossrail, uh, Tideway, London Power Tunnels, etc. And we've been fortunate enough along the way to do a lot of railway work for uh, Network Rail London Underground as well. And that has brought us two Queen's Awards for Enterprise Innovation, one in 2009 and one in 2016. So we've developed a product for initially for the smaller market, but now into the real heavy industrial sectors. For those of you who don't know about Excalibur screw bolts, this is an Excalibur screw bolt. It's a one-piece uh, steel anchor which has twin helix threads uh, thread rolled onto it at manufacturer and then it's case hardened um, to allow it to cut its way into uh, the hardest of construction concretes. So but effectively you just drill a hole and then screw this bolt into concrete. So that makes it one of the simplest and easiest and quickest products to install in the construction marketplace so it can be used for uh, temporary work such as uh, scaffolding and form work uh, along to tunnel services um, such as 120 year design life for crossrail for the platform edge screen brackets. So effectively this bolt is so quick and easy to use um, it's a real simple product um, that will save our customers time and money on application? Uh, well, COVID was interesting for us because we're classified as key workers um, by DEFRA. Obviously, air pollution monitoring was really important throughout COVID. So we stayed open the whole time. Um, we came to work every day. Um, we went. To, we had to go to skeleton staff because, you know, they, it went very, very quiet. Um, but 
we have service contracts with local authorities throughout the UK and we have a responsibility to keep their air pollution equipment up and running. Covid-19 impacted our business uh, quite dramatically first of all. Um, basically when the first lockdown came in uh, we lost 75% of our business um, in April last year. Um, we then went on to 50% of our business in May. I guess one of the benefits um, from COVID is that um, people are far more aware of air pollution than they ever were um, beforehand. It's, it's quite a hot topic at the moment. I think people are still not quite aware, so it's the single largest uh, environmental issue um, for human health around the world. Um, air pollution contributes to 6.7 million deaths around the world. The construction industry has managed to work in a COVID secure manner and being British designed and manufactured, we've managed to keep um, our products um, going out the door basically uh, to um, our customers um, here and in all over the world. We've had actually quite good export growth uh, to America, Australia, New Zealand is traditionally two of our best customers and that's, they've remained strong. Um, and also other markets such as the Middle East as well. In, in the run-up to Brexit, it, it was a farce, to be honest with you, because nobody knew what Brexit was going to be, no one knew what it was going to look like. Um, so you're trying to prepare for something that nobody could tell you actually what it was. We've basically, uh, leading up to Brexit, because obviously Brexit's been coming for quite a few years now, um, so we've been British, say, designed and manufactured for since uh, our inception. Um, so we haven't really had to do a lot of preparation for on the supply side rather than encourage our manufacturers to invest in some new machinery to make the bigger products which we had to bring some of the blanks in from, uh, from Europe. It's not been too disruptive so far but what we've found is that our customers have been impacted. There's been some delays uh, in terms of us receiving shipments. Uh, we haven't had too many delays in sending shipments, but the biggest issue we've had has been the VAT charge. Um, so we've got a lot of customers within Europe who never used to pay VAT for their orders. So now when we're shipping an order, um, they have to pay an extra you know, 20% or whatever their local VAT charge is that they didn't have to pay before to get that shipment out of the port. Material shortages, obviously, coming around the corner, unfortunately, steel being the, the main one uh, for us, obviously, uh, as a steel product. Um, but even things like cardboard boxes are becoming issues to get hold of now, and price increases are also coming into the pipeline. So it's going to be a challenge, but I think we're in a pretty good place. We've had to, you know, adapt. We've had to basically absorb some of the costs rather than pass everything on to our customers um, because we're concerned that we're going to lose business within Europe. And I guess the other aspect is that rather than seeking to grow our business in Europe, as uh, that was our largest growing area, we're looking to the rest of the world now that, that doesn't have the, the Brexit implications. So that was our preparation for Brexit, to make ourselves um, self-sufficient so that hopefully Brexit will have the minimum impact on us. We can also then, as the per hopefully the new government procurement policies coming in line after Brexit, we'll look at um, UK source product, uh, the sustainability of it, the environmental impact of it, uh, the economic benefit of, of manufacturing in the UK. Luckily, we've got an excellent um, DIT advisor who has been brilliant in helping us and supporting us all the way through. Um, so if there's anything I don't know, I phone him up and, uh, and he'll go and find the answer for me. Um, we use the Chambers of Commerce, Essex Chambers of Commerce, quite a lot. They've been really useful. And we've actively sought funding, grant funding, courses, training, to try and get as prepared as we can. Uh, the main uh, differences have been we tried to uh, work with our Chamber of Commerce uh, on exports uh, to Europe, um, but it is, seems to have been a far more complicated scenario than anyone ever expected. Um, we felt that obviously we take do the normal chain for Europe, for example, we've got um, four or five regular customers. Um, 
and they split sort of some to collect X works from us and some we do actually do the uh, transport of that. So we would go via a normal transit compa company, a normal freight company who would do all the paperwork for us, declarations and that sort of thing. But they have been snowed under, uh, as I can see by the amount of work that they've got to do now. So effectively, five pallets that we sent to Holland last year cost us £300 circa. Uh, this year they're costing us £700 to get to Holland. Um, and last year they took five days to get to Holland, and this year they took five, six weeks. So um, we're lucky in that our business has actually grown throughout this period, um, both in the UK and overseas. But we are focusing more on the rest of the world as opposed to um, just Europe, which you know is, is a shame in a way. But obviously, you've got to go where the um, you know where the market takes you. It's a very big part of our you know future proofing, shall we say, uh, of the product. We've got an excellent product, which should be used um, extensively on UK infrastructure projects. It's say predominantly here in the UK, but also uh, growth within the sectors we're developing in. Uh, overseas as well, so we've got a good, strong growth or st steady export market, Australia, New Zealand and also America uh, and something into the Middle East now we're doing a bit more, um, so we're hoping that market will, will grow and hopefully we, you know, we have got good partners in Europe, so we're hoping we can grow, grow that as well, but it's, it's, you know, the last few months have been a very difficult um, transition into you know doing business still in Europe so we just have to wait and see how that uh, that, that goes because as I say it's a, if it doesn't improve I can't see it being viable for either us or for our customers in in Europe if you'd like to find out more about trading with the EU head over to our website at www utas-essex.org for more information and resources.